Although COVID-19 cases continue to rise, flu cases, they are falling. CDC weekly U.S. influenza surveillance report says seasonal flu activity in the country remains lower than usual for this time of year. Yeah, so what happened to the flu this year, right? We're joined now by Dr. Rashini Raj, internist from NYU Langone. Doctor, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. And so I think yeah, a lot of people are wondering why, sorry to cut you off, why are we seeing a decrease in flu this year? Yeah, this is the, you know, if there is any silver lining to this terrible, terrible pandemic, it is this decrease, dramatic decrease in the number of flu cases and flu hospitalizations. And why it's so good that that's happening is hospitals, as you know, throughout the country, many are at capacity in terms of ICU beds, in terms of regular beds. So the last thing we could really handle right now are it would be a surge of mm -hmm. flu cases. Mm -hmm. So thank goodness we're not seeing the numbers that we normally see. And that really is due to the measures that everyone's taking, social distancing, wearing masks, you know, hand hygiene, right. not traveling as much as people normally do, because the flu is a virus just like COVID-19. It's contagious. And if you are doing those social distancing measures, you are going to see a drop, which is what we're seeing. Are we also seeing that drop because more people got their flu vaccine this year just in, uh, you know, out of an abundance of precaution? Absolutely, yes. So about 2 million more doses of the flu vaccine were given out this year than we normally see. And, you know, I always encourage, I always get the flu shot myself, but I always encourage my patients to do it. But this year, more than ever, I've been really encouraging them, as many doctors are, because, again, we know there's an issue with hospital capacity. If you do get the flu and you end up needing to go to the hospital, you know, there may not be a bed or you might not get the care right. that you normally would. So it's so important. The other thing is flu symptoms and COVID symptoms, very similar. So you don't want to be in this confusing picture where you're having symptoms, you're not sure if it's flu or COVID, or worst case scenario, you get both at the same time. Right. Oh, much, much higher risk of dying if that's, if that's the case. Yeah. So there was also some interesting data that came out from the CDC that had some speculating, and this, had, this was talked about in the beginning, right? That COVID-19 is more contagious than the flu. Fact or fiction here? That is true. Yeah, COVID-19 is more contagious, especially in certain populations. And you're going to see more of these uh, super spreading events, quote unquote, which we really don't see. If you recall, over many years, we really haven't heard of that with the flu. So part of it is with COVID-19, you have a longer period where someone has no symptoms. So that's more time for them to spread it to other people before mm. they feel sick. And just in general, the virus itself does seem to be more contagious. And we know in certain populations could be more deadly as right. well. Well, the problem, though, is they have some similarities, right, uh, when it comes to some of the symptoms of it. Does COVID-19, well, we've heard that COVID-19 can cause you to lose your sense of smell and taste. Is that true for the flu as well? No, and that's a great point. That is actually one distinguishing factor between the two. All the other things, runny nose, sore throat, cough, really fever, could be either. But the loss of taste and the loss of smell is something that really does not happen with the flu. Mm -hmm. I mean, loss of smell, maybe if you have a very congested nose, but in general, that's much more likely to be COVID than right. the seasonal flu. Yeah. Um, although flu numbers are down, you're saying now that other numbers have the potential to rise here. So what are we talking about? Yeah. So one thing that I and many colleagues are worried about is people are not going to the doctor for some of their routine medical care so true. and also some of their screening tests. So. I practice gastroenterology at NYU. I do routine colonoscopies where we do pick up cancer sometimes or if people have symptoms, they may not be going to the doctor to get them checked out. Mammograms is another thing. So this is something I really wanna tell people while I understand you don't wanna be going to a medical center right now, you're worried about getting sick. You know, if you're having any symptoms or you're worried about something or you have family history and it's time for you to get your screening checked, whether that's for breast cancer, colon cancer, heart health, definitely go to the doctor. Yeah, We're all point. in the medical center taking precautions to keep you safe, but you don't want to delay something and end up having a worse situation later on because you waited too long. It's right. such a good point. And, you know, just just in a full disclosure, I've been a little nervous to go to the dentist, right? So because you're, you're so up close and personal with your mouth wide open here. Mm -hmm. So is there a fear there? You're 100% right. And by the way, I've also been a little bit fearful to go to the dentist, but this is where the vaccine comes in. Yeah. And this is why it's so important that healthcare workers and eventually everyone get the vaccine because, yeah, it is scary when you're you know, opening up your mouth to another person who's been interacting with many. By this point, hopefully many of the dentists out there have been vaccinated, mm. at least with their first dose, hopefully their second. And I am I just got my vaccine, uh, the second dose a few days ago. So as soon as I feel like that's kicked in, which will really be in a week or two, I'm going to the dentist because, again, you don't want to neglect the rest of your health out totally. of fear of COVID. Did you have any um, side effects from that? 
I did not. You know, the only thing I had was the sore arm, which I get with my flu shot every year yeah. for, for about a day. Okay. Um, I didn't have anything else. But, you know, there will be a certain percentage of people who will have some side effects, things like a fever or maybe even some body aches. But, you know, one, one researcher told me, I thought this was really interesting, that's actually a sign that the vaccine is working, that ah. your body is mounting that immune response. Oh, okay. that's, that's exactly what you want. So even if you get those side effects, be grateful, be thankful. That means your body's responding. And overall, I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to get the vaccine. All the researchers, the scientists, the volunteers, mm -hmm. everyone involved, even with the logistical layout, with yeah. rollout, which we know has been somewhat problematic. But if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity to get the vaccine, please do go grab get it. it. All right, yeah. I want to bring in Ben right now because he's got a question for you. You know, I, I usually have 17 colds by this point. During, during throughout the year and you talked about the flu because people are being socially distant hopefully and wearing masks and not getting these colds and flu is that going to lower their immunity is that going to lower their mm. ability to fight off the common cold or the flu if they get it anytime soon no you know so in terms of our immunity that that's really established young, when we're younger so yes if you never had a cold or were never exposed to any germs as a very very young child then maybe you wouldn't build up that sort mm -hmm. of immune response but by this age we're, we've all been exposed plenty of times to these colds and flus. So not getting it this year, we should just be happy about that, but not worry that it's going to impair our immunity in any way. Right. I hope my grandma Rose, who's 90 plus, was listening to you because she, she got the vaccine yesterday and she was complaining about a okay. sore arm and she was worried about the sore arm. And I was like, it's completely normal. Yes. Say it loud grandma for Grandma Rose. Rose. That's your body <laughs> doing the right thing. <laughs> Dr. Raj, appreciate you and your expertise this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe.